Investing with IBD is brought to you by Alliance Bernstein, a global investment manager offering active, flexible solutions across asset classes. ABS the tools and expertise investors need to get their portfolios ready to navigate late cycle investing. To find out more, visit abfunds.com. Okay, everybody, welcome to Investing with IBD for May 22nd, 2019. I'm your host, Arusha Pierce, and today we have another special guest. We have David Ryan, former O'Neill portfolio manager, three time U.S. investing champion, and market wizard. Thanks, Dave, for being on here. Arusha, thank you for having me. It's, it's always a pleasure. On today's podcast, we're going to talk about the markets, post analysis, and we're going to end the podcast with some current stocks, including some stocks that David is watching personally. Okay, so let's get into the market. So the market is in correction right now. Uh, of course, we had a really strong move from the bottom, so we were due for some kind of pullback. But leading stocks, yeah, let's, leading stocks are still hanging in there, but it's getting a little bit more narrow. Yeah, the, there's, we've lost some individual stocks that were leaders. We've even lost a, a leading group, the semiconductor uh, index and semi, uh, semiconductor stocks like Xilinx really broke and broke hard. And so you're losing some of your leadership, and to me that just tells you you've got to get a little bit more cautious. You have to maybe come off a margin uh, and, and just really focus on those that are working and be very, very selective. Now, David, let's go into this a little bit more because uh, if you take a little bit longer term view, maybe back a couple of years, uh, you mentioned something in interesting uh, about the, the markets of, of being sideways. Yeah. Well, if you, if you just look at the S&P 500, it hit a high in January of, uh, of 2018. And we did made just a tiny bit uh, higher high in uh, September, October of last year, and then a little bit higher high. But if you look at it, if you just draw a line across the high from uh, January of uh, 2018, we really haven't gone anywhere. And so we've, it's just really been a sideways market. And I think what people have to come to realize is that there are times where the market can go sideways for years. And I mean, I, I looked back, and you can do this on, on MarketSmith. Uh, there have been about five or six times since the early, um, you know, early 1900s where the market has gone sideways for over six to seven years. There have been periods where, I mean, even 1966 to 1982, the market went sideways for 12 and a half years. Oh, wow. And so I think what might be happening is that passive investing with indexes has been so much in vogue in the last, you know, over the last nine years uh, that it might start switching where you're really going to have to pick individual stocks to outperform the market. Uh, you know, maybe some of your market money can be in indexes, but I, I think the, the tools that uh, IBD has and MarketSmith can help you find uh, some of the leaders and some of the, the great winning stocks. Yeah, and, you know, and there are some really good, even if it is a sideways market, there are some great opportunities if you know how to pick those stocks and really manage them well. Yeah, yeah, and even during that period I talked about, 66 through 82, there were a lot of great growth stocks that had huge moves. That's when Walmart started its move in the 70s. And a stock that we're going to talk about later, uh, Pick and Save, started in the, the later 80s and, and had a, a, a fourfold move. So they're, they're out there. And I, you know, I, I use this quote from, uh, I guess, Jim Cramer, who says there's a bull market somewhere. <laughs> and so th th there always is. And you just have to really sort through and find what areas are, are working. Okay, so let's dig a, a little bit deeper just in the overall market, how you develop a feel for the market, because there's some other kind of indicators you look at uh, to help you gauge uh, the market environment. Yeah, I, a lot of my, uh, my stance on the market comes from looking at hundreds of individual stocks mm -hmm. every week. Yep. And I go through a number of lists um, that uh, either created on MarketSmith or, or screens that I've developed and I just go through one after another. And a lot of it comes down to, can I find stocks that are setting up? Uh, do I see a, stocks, a lot of stocks that are rolling over? Um, and if I do, then I, I just I constantly adjust with what I'm seeing uh, in the individual stocks. 
I do uh, pay attention to the indexes, um, but uh, you you shouldn't get so overfocused on the indexes that you lose sight of individual stocks that could be starting a new move. Um, so it's a combination of uh, of an overall general market, looking at the indexes, looking at individual stocks. And then I do look at a few indicators like advanced decline lines to see what kind of liquidity is in the market, how many stocks are, are moving. And right now it's telling me that we're kind of in a uh, – we're still in a positive zone, but – we're losing a little uh, liquidity, and we're the market's just narrowing. Yeah, and it seems like really the the one growth area are software stocks, but everything else, like you mentioned before, semiconductors, they're starting that they've fallen off. Right. Uh, so so we keep losing those leaders, but those software stocks still uh, they still hang in there. Yeah, they, they're hanging in there. Um, some of the other sectors I'm seeing that shouldn't be acting so well, utilities are starting to go into, into new highs. Mm-hmm. And that tells you people are getting a little bit more defensive. And rates are dropping, and that's, that's helping the utilities. But then the transportation index, which is usually strong in a very, very good economy, that's starting to roll over. So you got a few weakening signs out there, uh, but I don't think it's – we're yet to the point where you know, you really have to – come completely out of the market, there are individual stocks that are working. Now, let, let's let's take it a little bit more, uh, another concept, I think, just for just general investing. Because th- these days with technology, you're so connected to the market that everyone has a tendency to look at daily charts or even intraday charts. Uh, and uh, what, what do you think about that? Well, it's, it's very interesting. When I, I came to O'Neill uh, and Company in, in 1982, and I had been kind of raised on their daily graph chart. So I was focused on daily graphs. And, and, and during the 16 years that I was at the company and I worked with Bill, he rarely ever looked at daily, uh, daily charts. He was focused more on the weekly. Yeah. And the weekly tends, if you look at the weekly, it tends to, uh, you, you don't see, you lose some of the, 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 in, the intraday and the daily fluctuations or the fluctuations during a week that could sometimes shake you out. So I think it's, it's good to always go back and forth. And really, I, I'm, I'm spending more time on the big picture and looking at the weekly charts than, than focusing on the you know, intraday, five-minute charts. Um, it, it, you can get lost in those things. Uh, well, I mean, it is also amazing, even just intra-week, where on Monday and Tuesday they'll hit these stocks really hard, you know, scare you out. Right. But then by the end of the week they bring them right back up, and then on a weekly chart it looks like just another week. Oh, I know. You, and you start going, "What did I? Why did I sell that thing out?" Right. Like, exactly. I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So the market is still in a correction, uh, but remember we could have a follow through day at any time. So you always want to keep that watch list fresh. You know, David talked about he's looking at a hun- hundreds and hundreds of stocks over the weekend. That's the way to do it. That's really the way to get a feel for the market. So let's take a quick break. But when we're gonna re- when we return, we're gonna talk about two key things that you need to add to your analysis process to become a better investor. So stay tuned. Hey guys, Arusha from Investing with IBD here. The global economic cycle is moving into its later stages, creating a less favorable mix of growth and inflation. Central banks aren't providing as much fuel to keep things moving either. And market volatility has come back in a big way. All of this makes investing a lot more challenging today. Alliance Bernstein can help. AB is a global investment manager with the tools and expertise to get portfolios ready for a more difficult path ahead. That means finding stocks from companies that are able to deliver quality growth over time. Adding downside protection against market downturns is critical too. And even though interest rates are rising, investors shouldn't avoid duration in their fixed income exposure. The bottom line, investments will have to work harder to generate long-term returns, but that shouldn't mean that investors have to struggle to find answers. AB offers actively managed flexible investment solutions across asset classes. It's what you need to adapt your portfolio for late cycle investing. To find out more, visit abfunds.com. We're back with David Ryan on Investing with IBD, and let's talk about two key things that everyone needs to add to their analysis process. The first is buy what you know. So David, let's go into this concept because this is a really important concept. Yeah. So many people, I think they, they try to make the market, or they think the market is so complex. And 
it's really as 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 easy or I don't want to say easy, but um, the most important thing is is look at your own life. You can get so many stock ideas from just what you're buying, where are you eating, what what restaurants are you going out to, um, what clothes are you are you buying, um, what are your friends talking about, just from from examining your own life, you can come up with unbelievable great investing ideas. I mean, just look at the phone that you you were probably using. Right. Um, that's it's probably an iPhone, and its the stock has had a phenomenal move over the last ten years. Or have you been to a uh, you know a Chipotle uh, Mexican restaurant? Right. There's another stock Monster that's had, move, that right? had a that had a big move. So, I mean, these things are all over the place because look at it this way. You're going to be buying probably the best product for the lowest price, and you're probably going to tell other people about it. And so um, right there, you're, you're making a great decision on what to buy. Well, is what is the company behind it doing? Do they have all these characteristics? That's what you have to go to next. Do they have a, a lot of these can slim ca- characteristics? And right there, you might just happen upon a, a great investment opportunity. Um, yeah. So while you're buying your iPhone in 2007, when when it first came out, yep. you could have bought the stock and done extremely well. So well, it's it, it, it's you kind of have to put. It's like a puzzle. It's a game. You're trying to put all these pieces together, and sometimes you come up with some great, great investment opportunities. Yeah. And bu- buying what you know, I really I think the big thing is it helps you build that conviction. Right, you, you can truly understand why they're earning that money, why they're selling like crazy, uh, as as opposed to if, like if I see like a chemical stock having huge earnings and sales, and it's because of some distillation process, it's hard for me to understand yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, and then there's, I mean, there's so many tech companies or biotech companies where, I mean, you need an advanced degree to understand right. some of their products. Yeah. Whereas there are still a lot of retailers, there are a lot of companies that you can be buying in the market uh, th- where you can understand them because you're you're buying their products. Now from, but from from there you want to check in a little bit, a little bit deeper, right? I mean, can some characteristics is good. You can go to their website. You can listen to conference calls. You yep. can get some uh, great information f- through the internet and just get a little uh, a little bit more depth, but. As you just mentioned, uh, it it gives you a little bit more holding power, and I'm not saying you have to you know hold an entire position through the whole through an entire move, even through major corrections, and you can always trade around positions. But it just gives you a little bit more insight um, and confidence in the stock that you're holding uh, that that it can go farther than it has. Yeah, and you know. Uh, when you were on one of our web- webinars for MarketSmith, you, you brought up one stock that went on a pretty good run, Control Data, and this was a product that you were using, and uh, so you could relate to it, and that's really how you discovered uh, that company, right? You pulled it up in MarketSmith and said, hey, you know, these guys are doing pretty well. Yeah, it's, um, it was a, it, it's a, a system that you can use for uh, entertainment within your home and controlling this, all the speakers and the music and integrating it all. And yeah, that helped me find that stock. But at some point, the stock started rolling over, the earnings started slowing down, and so I sold out of the stock. And then, it, I mean, it had a nice move, but it went from 37 all the way down into the, you know, down to $16 a share. But I was out long before that drop. But that's an example of, hey, here's a product that I thought was very, very good and can be able to control from my iPhone. And um, and it turned out to be a, a nice investment. Yeah, and, and that, that ticker symbol is CTRL, and it's actually Control 4 Corporation. Yeah. yeah. I, I got that And they just wrong. recently got taken over which, which is just really, a really couple funny. weeks ago. Yeah, but that that's a great example there. I mean, I remember I the way I stumbled on Tesla years ago is because I saw their car uh, and on Third Street Promenade. They had a showroom there, and I thought, my God, this is the the nicest looking car I've ever seen, and they're selling like crazy, and it's a ninety thousand dollar car. Right, right. So it's it, but, but these ideas they're all over the place, and you just. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, and you're going to come up with some great investment ideas. So let's go to the the second key thing that we all need to know uh, to become a better investor. And this is a harder one. 
This is a post analysis. Uh, so let's go in, into this, David. Well, the post analysis is, is this is probably the most important thing that you can do to improve your investment results uh, because once you you know the IBD Market Smith they lay out everything what you should be looking for what stocks that are, are acting well they you know have you focus on the companies with the best earnings and the best relative strength and once you know what to do in the market a lot of it just comes down to you against yourself the market you can figure out you can find individual stocks but it's it's really what are you doing in your investing that's holding you back from big gains and so that's why it's important when you're buying a stock to to screenshot the the, the chart and and put it in a file and maybe write down notes of why you bought the stock and then after you sell it go back and see why did you especially why did you lose money what was your mistake were you buying an extended stock or were you buying a stock that just didn't have the great earnings I did this I started at O'Neill in 1982 and I it, it was right at the start of a huge bull market I had a great move in my account I doubled my account and then I, I think I took an account from about 26,000 to over $50,000 but then uh, that was in about a six month period of time but then I lost everything back and finally I was so disgusted I took an entire weekend and I went through every stock that I'd bought and and sold and I wanted to see was there a pattern what was I doing wrong why did I lose all this back and I discovered I was buying extended stocks I'd buy a stock that the breakout point was 30 I was buying it at 35 and I finally got to the point where I said that's it I don't care what anything else looks like I'm buying the stocks right when they're coming out of the base and I'm I don't I, and that's what I'm gonna focus on and do that one thing right and that's when I turned around my results and I started doing extremely well and so that's something that I learned but maybe there's something that that you're doing differently maybe right. your selling is off but that's how you can really improve your results by analyzing really analyzing yourself and what you do in the market and, and a lot of times it's just one or two small adjustments yeah it doesn't take a lot and and then the results are that that much greater yeah it, but uh, but the hardest thing about it is that you have to go and look yes. at your mistakes. Which is awful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Who wants to go and admit they're wrong and see when they were wrong? And too many people, you get caught up with their egos and they think, oh, I'm always right or I should. But you have to walk in with a very low ego and 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 just analyze what you've the mistakes that you've made. Yep. Uh, now, as painful as it is, you know, Post analysis is key to improving as an investor. Now, after the break, we're going to take talk about a company that is Amazon proof and is all about treasure hunting. So stay tuned. Want to find stocks like the ones on this podcast? A lot of the best names we talk about come from IBD's exclusive stock lists, like the IBD 50 and the Big Cap 20. Whatever type of investor you are, we got a list for you. You can access every one of IBD's lists, plus stock ratings, exclusive analysis, and one-on-one -on -one coaching with a membership to IBD Digital. It costs less than a dollar a day, but for podcast listeners, we're offering an even better price. Go to Investors.com slash podcast offer right now and get your first two months for only $20. We're back with David Ryan, and let's get into current stocks. And the let's start off with the first one. And, and this is a company that turns shopping into a treasure hunt. And so I'm talking about Ollie's Bargain Outlet. And this is a favorite of David's. Well, it's it's a favorite because I've done well in the stock, <laughs> and I think that one of the first times I've uh, I came over here to to do something like this, I mentioned this stock setting up nicely and or starting its move and this is uh, Ollie's bargain outlet and it's ba really basically mostly east of the um, east of the Mississippi I guess there's some stores now in Texas but there's there's none of these uh, anywhere in California right. and uh, the stock started coming out in March of 2016 came out of a cup and handle at about uh, 23 dollars a share and then it had a a fourfold move uh, to 97 uh, up through October of 2018 
And now it's gone through, it, it, it went through a 39% correction and went sideways for eight months. And now it's recently gone to new highs, but the, the earnings just keep on coming through. The sales keep on coming through. Um, the, the important thing here is that I got to, you know, it had all the, the Can Slim characteristics. And then I did some more research. I started listening to their conference calls. Mm -hmm. And just one little tidbit stuck out back in that 2016 period where the CEO at the time said, we have, we have never closed a, a store in 30 years. It's amazing. And to me, that just tells me that they know how to pick locations. They know how to operate their company, and they're doing something extremely right. So that's one that I, I got aboard. The other, the other thing interesting is that I think I, I mentioned at the same time, I think Bill, one of the, Bill's biggest stocks that, that he invested in back in, um, in 1979 was Pick and Save. Pick and Save, very similar concept where they have closeouts, overruns, and that's what they stock their, their entire store is. And the reason why Ollie's and Pick and Save, it's, it's a treasure hunt is because you don't know what's going what's gonna to show up or what's going to be in there. Like what, every week from week to week, right? Yeah, you yeah. know, like when Toys R Us went out of business, they got a lot of, a lot of their, over their toys that they, they, they could sell or the stores that were closing. So, so that's, that's kind of the treasure hunt part of it. Yeah. And, and so it, Pick and Save had it. it it's it, very interesting. When I went to, to, to really compare the two, Pick and Save in uh, 1979 through 1983, also it had an 18-week cup and handle, and then it had a fourfold move out of that out of that cup and handle, that first cup and handle. And there were about four places that you could have added to the stock uh, over the next uh, over the next few years before it went into a one-year correction. Yeah, and it it actually started correcting. It split three for one. Stock went into a correction for a year, uh, and then and and pulled back. Uh, but that was also during a period where the market was going, uh, it was actually correcting and going down. So it just started going sideways. And then in September 1982, it actually broke out again and had another 150 uh, 50 percent move. It went from 19 to 50. So it, the comparisons between the two companies are very, very interesting. And, and I, I'm thinking that Ollie's got far to, the, to go because it's a regional story. That's turning into a national story, yes. and they've got a lot more territory and a lot more locations to uh, uh, to uh, to open. And the other thing about um, where you might have said it's Amazon proof. Well, they're dealing with closeouts and overruns and things like that. And these are things that that Amazon is not going to be be competing against. So uh, I I I really like the company. Um, you know, it, it recently went into new high ground. If the market gets, uh, you know, volatile and back and forth, it's probably going to have to go sideways. Uh, but the the comparisons, it's, it's a similar business, and it's just doing it, you know, 20, 30 years later. And uh, it's and, and, and it's, it's something that, uh, you know, you can look to as, as a possible investment going forward. The last thing, too, is that, even though the stock broke out in um, all the way back in uh, March of 2016, it had a number of buying points, a number of, p of spots where if you missed the first move, you could have gotten the second move. Yep. If you missed the second, you could have got the third and even the fourth. So even, you know, that, that's uh, I, in the, long ago I said, you know, sometimes I just let, I see what stocks double in the market and then I wait for that next base and I get the next double. Yeah. And and so now this is and, and this is one that okay so you came on the the market spent the webinar I think it was in January 2017 and this was the stock that you spoke about that that it was around thirty dollars at that point right it was a little bit more than thirty dollars coming out of a a really nice cup with handle uh, and during that whole time really pretty much this, this whole time you've been holding at least some shares of Ali. And right. it goes back to the buy what you know. You went to some of the stores. You started to get the concept. You listened to the conference calls, yeah. and that gave you the conviction to hey, let me just keep holding some of those shares. Right. The for the the uh, the first time I knew they had a location in a place where I was traveling down in uh, Myrtle Beach, uh, I I just made a point of of, of going there to to, um, to to walk through the store, buy their products, 
even becoming one of uh, part of Ollie's army. <laughs> I guess, and that's like a rewards loyalty yeah, rewards, program. Yeah, uh, you know, rewards program if you shop there enough. Um, so, and then every year when I go back down to Myrtle, Myrtle Beach, um, I, I, I go through the store again to see has anything changed? What is anything different? Are they still operating the same way? So, and I mean, it's, it's just doing channel checks and to see how they're doing. And I know... You know, Bill used to go to uh, different companies or retailers that that he was invested in, and he would count the cars in the parking lot. Yes, yes. So it's it's the same thing. I mean, you can do your own research. You don't need Wall Street to tell you what to buy or sell. This is just you know something probably in your own neighborhood that you you can check out yourself. Yeah, and now it had a big break uh, at back in December of 2018. And, you know, th- this was a, a, a pretty good reason for a lot of people to close out the position or sell most of the position. Um, but uh, but you held on to at least some of it, right? Yeah, I, I held on to a, a, a very small portion. And, and there's nothing wrong with trading around a core position. And I held a, a small position when it broke on earnings. Uh, but the the earnings were actually very good. I mean, the earnings were were up forty six percent, sales up nineteen percent. Um, but the stock was coming off. That was in the middle of December, when the whole market was selling off, and I yeah. think they just took everything down. But the fact that I knew the company well, I still held on to it, and it it didn't spend that much time down there at at, at sixty before it started moving back up again and and participating in the rally. So. Um, that's I, I. That's where if you know the company well, you can make money off it over the long term, and not just over a three day trade or a few weeks or things like that. You can uh, you can get a long term gain out of it. Yeah, and and this the even though it had that really big break, the lo- long super long term uptrend was it was still in a uptrend. They tested it a little bit, but it, it's still especially if you bought it way back at twenty thirty dollars. You still had some really low cost basis that you earned the right to. Hey, let me give it a little bit more of a chance. Yeah, and if you just key off a 200-day moving average, the 200-day moving average stayed in an uptrend. Has stayed in the up, uh, uptrend since uh, since the beginning of that move. Yeah. So it's it's telling you that it's it, it's still intact. Yeah, and and so this stock has emerging out back into new highs, uh, coming well, recovering from that 39% correction. And so definitely one to keep an eye on. So let's go to the second stock. And this is PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL. I, and you know, this is this is one that a lot of people are familiar with, strong brand name, their payment processor. And Venmo is, is really kind of the, the, the new thing for, for them over the last few years. Right, and, and Venmo, I guess has actually become what is it a verb um, because oh, that, yeah. Venmo yeah. me or something I, I like Venmo that. I Venmo people everywhere. Yeah, and uh, well, well, but it's interesting that even though that's it's becoming very popular, they still haven't made money off that segment, and they're they're starting to figure out how they can charge extra for extra services on this thing. But uh, this has been a, a very very consistent company. And I, PayPal has been around. First, they were connected. It was a, actually a spinoff from uh, eBay. Right. right. And, and you can still buy things through PayPal on eBay. And I guess their revenues from eBay are getting smaller and smaller. But you're able to use uh, PayPal in a number of different ways uh, f- for sending money. And I've used it. Uh, I've used it many times in the past. Now, the interesting thing about PayPal, it had it had a nice long base. Um, going into uh, into its earnings report in um, in uh, in a January a- at the end of January, mm-hmm. and they had it. They had a good report, and the the, the earnings were up twenty five percent, sales up thirteen percent, and the stock sold off. And it sold off for one day, but then it immediately started coming back. And on that on that sell off, that's where I first actually purchased it. Because I said there's nothing wrong with this report, the stock's in a good segment, in a good uh, in a good area, and then it's made a very very nice move. And I just think that longer term, the consistency of the earnings, the way the stock is acting, the way it's it's still holding up in a in a market that's getting a little more volatile, uh, this could be a, a good a good name going forward. And, and let's go a little bit further into just the the earnings reaction because that. Those next few days can tell you a lot about what Wall Street really thinks about that report. Yeah, well, I mean, if you 
if you see where the stock if a, if a stock reacts badly on earnings or it, let's say it drops and it and it stays down and it closes near the low of the day to me that's telling me that there was selling throughout the day and a lot of people liquidating positions especially if it's on high volume but the fact that this this immediately went it went down but then it started rallying and within its trading range on that day it closed more to the upper end or the the upper half of its trading range telling me that some a lot of that volume was people actually buying the other thing is that it pulled right back down i think almost hit its 50 day moving average mm -hmm. it pulled back down onto a base that it had previously had come out of so you had a lot of support in that area and then the very next day it was up again and it was up on it was also very good above average daily volume and then it, it immediately came back right back to close uh, to highs in the next few days and then launched uh, launched a great move yeah and and, and just a really good, nice trending stock now acting like a leader should right and it's it, it's uh, and you know now it's a bigger company and it's uh, it looks like a a core institutional holding and and I know institutions have continued to accumulate positions in that every quarter in the last year you've had increased institutional sponsorship uh, in this company so let's go to the the third stock here and this is Generac and this was an interesting one when you said you wanted to talk about this because this is generators here uh, so wh why did this come up on your radar well this is something that I've been very interested in recently uh, in um, on November 9th I live in Malibu California and uh, we experienced a fire that came right through our um, well right it actually burned uh, a, a, a storage barn that that we had in our house and house across the street burned down the one behind us burned down and up the street 60 to 70 homes are gone and the reason why I got interested in this is that I really needed a generator and we were out of power for 18 days and I I came to enjoy the the fact that uh, a, a friend actually bought a smaller portable generator over and and that helped out but um, with all the different things that are going on in the US uh, in terms of uh, in terms of an aging grid and aging electrical grid the fact that um, that even PG&E there was an article in the LA Times talking about four and a half to five million homes could be without power at times of high winds they're actually going to turn the electricity off uh, you know that will spur a huge demand for this company's generators mm -hmm. now they have 51 percent of their their market is uh, residential um, uh, generators 41 percent is commercial and industrial market and uh, and and so there could be a, a huge potential for this stock uh, to make a move. Now, it the earnings have been have been have been fairly good. Um, five out of the last six quarters have been gains of uh, I think over uh, over twenty uh, twenty three percent or so. Um, they only had one quarter a few quarters ago that was only up two percent. The sales have continued up. So the earnings are good. The stock hasn't taken off yet. This is a watch. This is a stock I'm watching, and this is this is buy what you own because I did buy one of their generators. I'm all set for the next power outage, um, and so the other thing that's very interesting is if you look at a if you take a step back and you look at a long term chart on Generac, this stock has actually been going sideways for five years. It it came out. It went public in 2010 had a great move it went from 10 to actually 60 so it has had the ability I always like to, to, to see this I always want to look back and see has the stock that I'm interested in had a move in the past and this one has I mean it had a six-fold move built has gone sideways for five years earnings are still are coming through and so it's building the base for the next move hasn't broken out yet and maybe we have to wait another three months maybe it's beginning of six months but this is one of those ones I'm, I want to put on the watch list and and get ready if it actually starts following through and goes through its old high yes yeah, so for, for all of you when you're on your marks with charts or looking at any charts look at on a monthly chart yeah. 
because it, it is amazing. It's just you can really see that really strong run that David was talking about, and then it taking five years off, and it's almost building a really big cup with a handle, and it's starting to emerge from that. That really does put it in perspective. Yeah, and you know, but this is on a watch list. It's not bought yet. But I'm watching it closely, and it, it looks like it's setting up. It had a nice a nice move off its last earnings report, uh, but now it's been drifting down as the market has, has come off. The relative strength is actually picking up. Um, but this is, yeah, this is a, a definite watch, um, and, and it will give me some time to listen to more conference calls and, and get to know the, the company. But when I talk to people about generators now, um, a lot of – I just talked to a friend yesterday – said you know that that makes a lot of sense because when you're out w- w- when you're out of power and you have no lights yeah uh it could be a little it's it's a little scary yeah and you know what's going to be the next disaster in southern california well it might be it might be an earthquake right. but wherever you live there's always something yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah. something that's going to get you yeah. and so uh you know it's 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 good to have so those are three great stocks that, that we just spoke about that David highlighted here. And David, thanks so much for being here. It's great having you. Okay, thank you. Always always a pleasure to do this. Love talking about the market. And next week, we'll have Chris Gessel back on the show for a discussion about vertical violations. Now, this is a crucial concept to be aware of when it comes to spotting potentially prolonged corrections. And we'll also have a sponsored interview Randy Watts of William O'Neill & Company will be talking to Doug Peebles, Chief Investment Officer of Fixed Income at Alliance Bernstein. And they're going to be talking about fixed income strategies, so don't miss it. I'm Arusha Pires. Thanks for listening. And for this week's Nilton Charts, make sure to go to Investors.com slash podcast, where you'll find details for each episode in the podcast episode section. And make sure to subscribe, rate, and review our podcast if you haven't already. We'd really appreciate it. You can also send us your questions and comments to investingpodcast at investors.com. We would love to hear from you and may use your comments on an upcoming episode. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.